live in Williamsburg anymore or in Manhattan or, mm-hmm. or anywhere else because I live in this little tiny hovel of a place very far away from anyone everything. I know and everything. You took the train out here. Thank you. Yes, and, um, <laughs> and lately I've just been feeling like, you know what? Like literally, I feel like I've probably pushed my body and my mind to the point in the last three months where I probably dodged death a few times just like doing crazy shit like staying up for a week because I just need to keep pushing just going so be DJing like a 12 hour party MCing for 6 of those 12 hours and then coming home and being inspired to write something and writing That's and, then, and then realizing I haven't eaten yet so I'll eat and along with eating like I'll grab a fifth of Jack and I'll just go ahead and drink that and then be in the studio and get a phone call like oh shit I forgot I have a gig tonight and like go and go do it all over again and like rinse and repeat and you're in different spaces all over the city or like up in Boston all of a sudden or down DC or whatever it might be and like so you, do you have gig lag? I don't think it's <laughs> gig lag I think it's there have been a couple of points where I've just gone out of my mind and I'm thinking like if I wasn't doing this I wouldn't really be doing anything else with my life so I'm happy in the moment and if this moment passes and like my heart palpitations like get the best of me and like I'm dead at least you know, if I lived life backwards, I was happy the moment that I passed. And so, it's interesting to think that all of this is a byproduct of that, and there's value to it for people outside of what the value is for me. But, but I mean, music, it's the communication tool we've used as a civilization from the dawn of civilization, right? It's, it's the methodology by which we passed on, oh, we slayed the beast this way. And these are the stories we told each other around campfires, you know, that coupled with hieroglyphics and other means of communication. It's how we, our history as people has traveled. So whether it be, you know, tribal messaging that became the spirituals, that became the blues, that became rock and roll, that influenced what became hip hop, you know, or whether it be mantras, which still live today, that became holy text. That's the power of what music is. You know, what we've done is we've completely lost sight of the fact that this is why we as humans created this tool or we're given this tool if we believe in a higher power or this tool was placed in our circumference as energy in the universe and a lot of people over the years have watched a lot of people around me get very 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 famous and rich doing exactly what we all do and um they're like yo Shanti why are you like living why are you living out in Sunset Park or why are you like Where's your, like, big car? Or what, you know, when are you going to give it up and, like, go do something that, like, makes you king's ransom? And I'm like, you know, that's really not the purpose of why any of this is going on. Because a lot of musicians perfect their craft because they want to be remembered. They don't want to be forgotten. But what gets lost in translation is that there's no such thing as a recording artist. That's nomenclature that was created by record corporations when they needed to distinguish who was an artist in a corporate sense and who was enabled to put out you know, the products that they wanted to market as opposed to who's a musician and who can really tap into the, the greater like in the Jungian sense like the collective unconscious and like channel what the feeling of a people are you know? and um, I think through rap rap has contributed to this ability for people who strive to be artists to divorce themselves from the purpose of why art exists in our culture. Myself included, because I spent many years making music that I felt was training for whatever it is I'll do next. But, I mean, I'm as guilty as anyone else in releasing a catalog of music which doesn't always relate with why we're actually doing what we're doing. You know, sometimes it might be a little sensationalistic, sometimes it might be misogynistic, sometimes, you know, everyone grows. But I feel if you want to become an artist, you need to kind of challenge yourself to to make things which will last a lot longer than you do. Whether it be researching and learning, you know, different cultural contexts of music, in the sense of ethnomusicology, or reach for what comes next or what you perceive to come next and challenge yourself to incorporate that into what you're doing um, rather than turning on the radio and saying what's he doing I want to be as rich as him or I want to be as famous as her or I want to date the kind of people they date 
or I want to go to the places that they go to. I mean, shit, if you want to go there, just get yourself a nice corporate job and take your two <laughs> weeks of vacation and, and, you know, go to school. You know, don't get into entertainment to do that, you know? Because as an entertainer, I think the plight is, I mean, you'll find the reality behind a lot of these people is when you do go to those places, you're broke, but you're giving up the perception that you're not. And your job is to entertain, therefore you entertain. So if you're honest with yourself about that, then... So I'm just being honest with myself about all of that, because it's like there's no trappings besides this. And if I did my job right while I was here, I've, I've contributed to things that will communicate what we were all feeling at a certain time and space as a civilization, and I'll be one of the many voices who contributes to that. Because we don't remember who wrote the mantras from Sanskrit. I'm sure we can in an academic setting, we can sit down with somebody who can trace, trace it back. But what we remember is the music. And what we sing along to is the music. Last time you were in church, did you ever wonder who wrote that hymn? <laughs> no, but you sing it. You know? Same goes for mantra, same goes for spirituals. Goodness gracious. Do you know how many years Led Zeppelin was in court in litigation over getting sued for stealing all the blues stuff? Like, Case in point, so if it's good, it'll live on. And I guess you have to take the ego out of all of that and understand, if I do my job really well, no one will know that it was me, but it, that energy will exist forever. And to take it a step further, that energy was not ever yours. It was just meant to pass through you. Eight pieces of meat.